Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Today we want to look at new Calgon's R, um, RX11 flush. Now, when it comes to flushing a system, the best practices state that if you're changing the system out, that you should change that line set as well. Um, but for cost effective reasons and, and other things like that, a lot of times um, we can just flush the lines out and still protect the integrity of that line set for a new install system. So if we were gonna do that, our RX11 flush is one of the products that we could use. Now, you'll notice that there's two boxes here, and, and one of the boxes comes with your hose and the uh, gun to actually use this product. Um, if you were to buy the other box, it might just come with the two canisters of RX11 minus the hose and the, the gun to be able to use the application. So you wanna make sure that if you go purchase one of those that you've got all of the necessary parts, make sure that that kit includes all of the parts that you'll need to go ahead. Now, we've, we set this up in a lab condition, so we're not outside, and it's 100 degree, 105 degrees today in Texas, so I'm glad not to be outside. But we set it up in the lab conditions for you, so we're gonna kind of demonstrate some of the things that would be necessary if you were gonna go ahead and flush out your lines in a system. You could have a compressor burnout, um, the outdoor unit might need to be changed, it might be a complete system change out, or whatever the case may be, you can use your RX11 flush to kind of protect, clean out those lines, protect the integrity of those copper lines, and then allow for safe transfer or transition to a different type of setup or different refrigerant altogether. So let's go ahead and move over to our indoor and outdoor units and look at what we're gonna need to prep to be able to flush out our lines from there. So before we start, a couple things we gotta make sure we do. We have to have a, a few tools to make sure that we're all set up and ready to, to uh, flush our lines out. The very first thing we need to do is go ahead and disconnect or de-energize the system and make sure we don't have any electricity flowing through there. Always double check with your meter um, before you stick your hands in anything. Also, make sure that you wear gloves and your safe and eye protection when you're doing uh, any procedure like this. Anytime you're working with HVAC equipment, you wanna make sure that you take all of the necessary uh, safety precautions. So gloves and eye protection are, are a must um, in, an, in a situation like this. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure, disconnect our condensing unit um, from our line set. Uh, also, want to remove the dryer so sometimes the dryer is located on the inside of the condensing unit if it's located on the inside of the unit you can just cut the lines and and move it out of your way um, but if it's not if it's located on the outside you're going to want to make sure that you uh, cut your dryer out of the system as well so that you can clean the line set without the dryer in there and then once you do that um, you're going to be ready to go. Also, uh, if we did not uh, put all of our refrigerant into our system, make sure that you recovered it properly. Uh, you may need a recovery machine, your recovery tank and your scale uh, to make sure you've gotten all of the refrigerant out. You could have a compressor that's burnt out or, in, uh, or a compressor that's not operating. So if, if you had that, you want to make sure that you've got your recovery uh, machine available so that you can properly dispose of or remove any refrigerant from the system before you start. Once you get to the indoor unit, you want to take your evaporator coil, you want to make sure that you cut this particular piece out, especially make sure you cut it where you leave the uh, metering device with the coil or just take the metering device out altogether, kind of like we did with our dryer. We don't want our metering device or our dryer um, inside of our lines that we're flushing out. We're going to go ahead and replace all of that and make it make it new. Um, we don't want to clog that by sending the flush and all of the dirt and debris that the that the flush is going to get out. We don't want to clog up our dryer, or clog up our metering device with that that dirt and debris. So we want to make sure that we get that out. Once we cut that out, we're going to isolate that, and then for lab purposes, we just went ahead and 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 had two pre-cut already um, that are gonna go over to our outdoor unit. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our flush and we're gonna blow from inside as if I were inside of the house all the way through our line set to the outside and then it'll discharge on the outside of the house. Once we get all of that set up, we're ready to go ahead and grab our flush and begin the process. You wanna designate a starting point and an ending point for your, your flush. 
typically what we would like to do is we like to start inside um, and then end outside where it's well ventilated. Um, so we're going to blast our RX-11 flush through our line set from the inside of the house um, and have it terminate somewhere to the outside. You want to make sure that you have some type of collection device. Um, in this case, I'm going to use a bucket here um, for that. And on the instructions for the for the flush, it comes with varying uh, lengths of time that you should flush, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, a minute, depending on the length of the line set. So read that, figure out how long you need to flush, and then you're gonna simply squeeze the trigger and then blow your refrigerant out that way, and it'll collect in the, uh, or blow your flush through the lines, and then it'll collect in whatever reservoir you have outside. Well, remember when we saw a couple of different canisters? This is just a canister that you would buy um, as a refill. The other one is a tank that you would actually fill up. So it comes with this injector, uh, injector tube here that you have to connect to the top. Um, also the hose and the gun, remember I so told you earlier that that comes separately. Um, but we went ahead and we connected those um, to, to our refill canister um, so that we could go ahead and, and flush our system. So after we get everything all set up and we've got our collection reservoir outside and all ready to go, we've got everything disconnected, we've got our coil away from the system, we've got our condenser unit cut out, then it's just a simple squeeze of the trigger for however many seconds we, we want and then we're ready to flush. The, the last thing you need is a bucket, some type of uh, collection reservoir for the uh, the, the whatever you flush out of the lines to be disposed of. You want to make sure this is in a well ventilated area. Typically we want this to be outside um, so that you know it's we got plenty of air, plenty of space. Um, we don't want any of those fumes or anything in a very in enclosed space uh, where they could be harmful to us. So we always want to make sure we discharge whatever we have outside. After you do that you can go ahead and we're going to move to the inside and disconnect a few things up there and then be ready to use our RX-11 flush. So you've got your gloves on, you're, you're, all, ready, you're all set up, you've got your iPro, uh, we've got everything set up, man, all, of it, all it is now is just a squeeze of the trigger and then we're ready to go. All right, so we've got some help from outside. Uh, they're outside at the outdoor unit and they're just going to hold it and I'm going to blast this line with, uh, with our flush here and whatever dirt and debris trapped in this line should come out and we'll see that. So we should see um, dark coloration and then as it gets clear, um, that's how we know that we've got it all cleaned out. Now that it's running clear, you know that you're about done. And we got all of the dirt, the dirt and debris out of that like that. Now once we get that part, we want to follow this up with a nitrogen purge to go ahead and push any of the remaining flush out of the out of our line set and that'll go ahead and force everything out. We're going to move that up to about 100 PSI and then push all the rest of that flush out. Um, but that concludes how to flush out your refrigerant lines using uh, New Cal Guns RX-11 flush. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday, and we'll see you next time. Hey, we absolutely love our HVAC community. We want you to continue to tune in. We want you to continue to, to leave us your, your comments. Um, make sure you click below to subscribe. We definitely want to hear from you, and we'll see you next time.